In today's video, we're going to create a React project with live user filters. In this project, we will learn how to fetch a random user API. We're going to use a sync, a wait for fetch. Then you render the data you receive as a live user. And we take it a step further, creating a search function, which is if I type a username, it will show me the exact same one or even all of the users that just include the text I type. So cool, right? If you are new here, like, subscribe, and let me know if you want to see more beginner-friendly UI tutorial like this in the comment. It's a win-win for both of us. So this is my React initial setup. Well, let's talk about the coding sequence. We're just going to hardcore first. Then we will style for the user box to make it look better. Then we move on to making it dynamic. All right, first, like I said, I will create a component structure of the user box. We start from top. We have the title, live user filter. We have the subtitle, search by name. We have the search box with the placeholder, search. Then I wrap all of these inside the header class. Okay, below that, I want to display the list of user. So I think of the UL tag. And of course, inside the UL tag, we have a random list of the user, but we have a creed. For now, it's just gonna be hard code. Let's add the image here, whatever image you want, or you can follow me with the URL randomuser.me lash API lash portrait lash main lash one dot gpeg. And for the out, let's say Tom. Below the image, I have the user info, which is include the username and the location. Okay, now we multiply to get a list of user. Just copy and paste it. We are basically done with the structure. Now let's move on to the styling. I recommend using SCSS rather than CSS because it follows the structure of HTML so it's easy and more organized. But just fine if you use CSS, you can also follow me. I go to the terminal and run npm install not sad. Okay, and now you can change app.css to app.css. Alright, first for the body inside the index.css, we want the background color of the hexadecimal FA, F9, FD, and see display flex. Then I want everything be center, it look good. The height 100VH. Then go back to the app.css. For the app, I'm gonna set the width 300 pixel and overflow hidden. I give it border radius and shadow box so you can see the subtle shadow right here. Come to the header, I set this background to AA2B2C. You can set any color you want. For me, I just wanted to sing with the colors of this meme, you know, for the thumbnail design purpose. And sure enough, the color of the contents will be white. Don't forget to give it padding to look good. For the title, let's remove any margin from it. Then the subtitle, I set a margin top and bottom to look better. Opacity 0.8, cause I want it a little bit faded. Now move on to the input, I set background color to RGBA value. 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.3. You may want to get rid of the ugly border. Then set border radius 50 pixel. The color of the text will be white, and the font size is set to 14 pixel. Again, give it padding and set the width to 213 pixel. But if you click on it, it will show the ugly outline. So let's say when I focus on the input, I want to remove the outline. 
see that's better all right we have just finished the header now we move on to the user list I want the background color to be white the list style type to none because I don't want the bullet point machine zero padding zero and so the height of this user box is too long I set the max height to 400 pixels but we will lose some user below so you give it overflow Y auto now we have the scroll bar here now deep dive into the list item display flex because I want the left side to show the user profile and the right side to show the information set padding to 20 pixel but I want something to tell me which one is being over it so I set background to EEE -E -E and cursor pointer okay let's do the image I want it to be rounded so we use border radius set to 50% and object fit cover because I want image to keep its aspect ratio and fills the given circle then give it height and width of 50 pixel and the user info we have the machine lab to take it away from the image and for the name I set it margin 0 0 and 10 pixel and for the location I set the font size to 12 pixel all right I'm done but you can also style your own if you don't like how it looks like this okay for now we don't need these hard codes anymore we're gonna fetch some data some random user from the third part API at randomuser.me if you don't already know I will show you how to get this API it's really simple you don't need to log in to an account it's totally free you just simply make a request to this URL let me open this URL in new tab we got all of the information of a single user name location age phone number etc but you only get information from one user the point is for our application I want more than that maybe 50 or 100 user how can I do that well you just simply need to add the question mark result equal the number of the user behind the URL in this case I just want 50 user and let's see it gives me 50 user and there are several ways you can fetch data from API in react but in this video, I just show you the simple ways you can fetch data using use effect hook. The use effect hook allow you to perform side effect in your components. And one of these side effects I have to mention fetching data. Before you use react hook, you need to import it. Then we got the use effect syntax. Inside of here, we got function API get. So let's say if we console log fetching data and I have empty dependency which is this U effect just run only once on the initial render but why we got two times fetching data on the console log if you have the same problem as me just because your app is in the strict mode you just need to turn it up and here we are just one on the initial render let's talk about fetching data so on this website jasonplaceholder.typical.com you can see the javascript code to show you how to fetch data in fact fetch return a promise object if you don't know about the promise yet I will have video in the future to show you but I can say it's simply the concept behind this because in reality the data you get after fetching API is really huge it maybe take few seconds to finish 
and you don't want to wait until it finish then render the rest of your app the promise says you just need to render the rest of your app or do something else when I finish my job I will give you data okay now you understand what I said you just need to copy this block of code and paste it inside the API get function In practice, you often use a sync await with the fetch method like this. A sync await syntax fit great with fetch because it simplifies the work with promise by syntactic sugar. And again, if you don't know a sync await, I will have another video to explain it clearly in the future. Here we are, after we fetch data, we will get a JSON, it's an object with the result properties that include 50 users within it. To simplify, I will console log json.results so we have an array of the user. Now I use another React hook to store all of these user data. And again, I import use stay. Here we have cons data set data use stay empty array. And right here, I will set data json dot result. Now all of the user data is stored inside this data array. In the next step, we need to render all of the user to the app. Let's say I have the ul tag with the class name, user list. Since our data array has 50 elements, that's impossible to render one by one. In fact, thanks to an array method called map, map is a method that create a new array by calling a function for every array element. So here is syntax. In this case, we just need the function, the current value called item, and the index. Inside the function, we got the li tag, and this is very important. We need to have a unique key of each li tag. If not, you will get a warning message right here. And the easy way to get the unique key is you give it the index. Inside of it, you have an image tag with a sort putting to the URL of this user. Inside the data we get. So let's say item.picture.large. With the owl, we have the item.name.first. Then we have the user info class. Inside of it, we have h4 class name name. We have the first name and the last name. In the p tag for location, We got location.city and location.country. Save and run this. Here we are. Now we have successful fetch 50 user from the API into our application. Very cool, right? But do not rush to skip this video because we still have the last part. It's very interesting. This is we create a function that filter the names of the user. So let's say if we search Tonis, you really need to store this string value before we can do anything. It makes me remember the stay and set stay. 
So right here I have a Cree and set Cree. And now every time you type in this search bar, it will trigger the on change event. So at the input I have on change. Here will be our function get e as an event. Now if you don't know what the event is, you can console lock it. You can see inside the target dot value we got exactly what we type. Now you know it and just set Cree is an e dot target dot value. Okay, now you got the Cree and you want to filter all the user who have this string on their name. You maybe think about the filter method. I also have video about this method. You can check it out. But here I will give you the syntax. Now all we need to do before mapping the user data, I want to filter it first. Inside the filter, I have the function and item is an argument. So let's say we have the first name and last name of the user. Must include the query. Now let's check it out. Let's say Albert. Okay, it works. Let's try Guerrero. Okay, it works. But the thing happened here, if I tie Albert with all the lowest K letter, it fails to be searching. I don't want it. I want to ignore the uppercase and lowercase letter. How can I do that? So there is a simple trick. You just need to turn lowercase both our search string and our filter string. For those who don't know to lowercase method, it's a method that converts a string to lowercase letter. And I have an example right here for you. All right, that's it. We finished our simple project by fetching data using use effect hook. We practiced with a bit of CSS and a bit of JavaScript. We use the filter and map method to work with arrays. Hope this project will sharpen your skill. If you find this useful for you, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you later.